It's time for Mass with Mr. Thomas. Hello, everybody. Here we are with lesson number five in the graph transformations chapter. This time we're looking at y equals f of negative x. Remember, there are six transformations in total that you need to be aware of, and this is the fourth one that I am looking at. So, y equals f of negative x. If you think about it then, normally we have the function y equals f of x, but this time it's f of negative x. So what we're doing is we're changing the x from a positive to a negative. If you think about that then, really, if x was 1, well, negative x would be negative 1. Or if x was negative 2, negative x would be negative, negative 2. And two negatives make a positive, so that would just be 2. So really, we're changing negative 2 to 2, or 1 to negative 1. And if you think about that on a graph, if you were going from 1 to negative 1, or from negative 2 to positive 2, or from 3 to negative 3, what we're doing is we're just really reflecting that point over the y-axis. So if we go from negative 4 to 4, well, we're reflecting it across this axis here. So if you want to graph y equals f of negative x, all you do is you reflect y equals f of x in the y-axis. Let's try an example of that then. So example one, here is the graph of y equals f of x. Sketch the graph of y equals f of negative x. So to do that, we have y equals f of x here. We've got certain points on this graph. Let's draw y equals f of negative x on the same diagram. So we'll change this to a dotted line. And all we want to do is we're reflecting it over this y-axis. So this y-axis here becomes a line of symmetry. So you need to think about every single point. So the 5, negative 9 will be reflected over. So that will come over here. The 7, if you reflect that over, well, 7 will be reflected over to become a negative 7. The negative 2, if you reflect that over, that will become come up here to positive 2. And the negative 3, well, because that's on the y-axis, if you reflect over, it's still going to be on the y-axis. So that would just remain there. Your new graph then will look something like that. You should have it so the y-axis is a line of symmetry and then start thinking about the points. So five, negative nine, if you change the x from a positive to a negative, you'll have negative five, negative nine. If you change other points as well, so seven will become negative seven. Negative two will become positive two. As you see, we're just changing the x value from a negative to a positive or positive to negative. And the point there, the negative three, uh, will just stay as it is because that's zero, negative three. And that is what you will get. Let's try example number two. Sketch the graph of y equals five to the power of x and y equals a fifth to the power of x on the same diagram. So this one is definitely a bit trickier. So first of all, y equals five to the power of x. Well, because you know it's a number to the power of x, it's known as an exponential. We dealt with that in the last chapter. And exponentials always pass through zero, one, and then one a. And in this case, a is going to be five because it's five to the power of x, so it'll pass through one, five. So your exponential will look just like that. That is a graph of y equals 5 to the power of x. Now we need to think about y equals 1 fifth to the power of x. Now what you're thinking is, well, it's still some number to the power of x. So it's still an exponential, so we still know what it's going to look like. Okay, it's still of the form some number to the power of x. We also know that this time, well, a fifth is really 0 0.2. So really the value of a is between 0 and 1. Work out a fifth at 0 0.2, that's between 0 and 1. And when your exponential is between 0 and 1, then your graph will look like that. So it's going to be sloping down the way rather than going up the way. But let's look at it in a wee bit more detail. Okay, We still don't really know the points it's going to go through or anything like that. So we've got 1 fifth to the power of x. Let's try and write this a different way then. What you could always do is because we've got 1 over 5 really the fives to the power of one. So what we could do is if we bring the five up to the top line, it'll become five to the power of negative one. And then that would all be to the power of x. If you remember back to national five, when you had to multiply brackets and you were thinking about the rules of indices, well, if you had 
x to the power of a all to the power of b, you just multiplied those two numbers together. So you had x to the power of ab. So putting some numbers in, if you had x cubed to the power of 5 times m together, that would be x to the power of 15. So this 5 to the power of negative 1 to the power of x, if you times m together, it just becomes 5 to the power of negative x. Think about it then, the first line here that we've got, that is, that is y equals 5 to the power of x. We're wanting to graph then y equals 5 to the power of negative x. And what we've done is we've changed the x from a positive to a negative. And doing that reflects the graph in the y-axis. So we'd have to graph 5 to the power of x and 5 to the power of negative x. We're changing the x from a negative to a positive, positive to negative, so it's just reflecting it in the y-axis. So you would just get something like that. Think about the points then. Well, 1, 0, 1, if you reflect that over, it's just going to be 0, 1. The x value will change from positive to negative and so on, but 0 would just stay as 0. But 1, 5, if you change the x value to a negative, it would be negative 1, 5. And that would be the graph of y equals 1 fifth to the power of x. Give these questions a shot, see how it goes in the book. Good luck, enjoy, have fun, bye.